Jess. I'm Mandy. And we are Drama Bonded, a podcast. Wow. <laughs> a podcast. A podcast. Where we cast into ponds. We catch fish. A podcast where we talk about and bond <laughs> over the drama and the trauma in the Bachelor multiverse and throughout Western pop culture and ponds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's very indicative of, I guess where things are at today. (laughs) Yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But I will say the bright spot in all of this is I had a lot of fun watching Charity's episode. I did too. I was, I don't want to say that I didn't expect to not like the season, but I was pleasantly surprised by the energy in the first episode. I was too. Um, after getting over being super miffed that American Idol tried to play every time that I hit play on Hulu, um, I will say the episode ended up being well worth the effort to watch. Like, Yeah, it was a super fun first episode. Yeah, my expectations, I mean, and not because of anything other than just like the first episode is always kind of lame with this, like both The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Um, so yeah, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Um, I guess before, though, we really get into the nitty gritty, uh, if you haven't done your bingo card, it's never too late. Play Bachelorette Bingo with us. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And we have a candy review. Yeah. This week, we are reviewing Starburst Gummies Duos. Yeah. What did you think, Jess? I... I'm in a really forgiving mood where sugar <laughs> is just basically everything to me right now. So I I enjoyed them. I've I well, you also said you were craving fruit snacks. Fruit snacks, yeah. They definitely feel like a gummy fruit snack roll. Um, in that in that sense. I think they're fine. I think my issue with them initially was I was disappointed they did not taste more like Starbursts. And I also felt like they were a little too sweet, which Yes, I am aware we are reviewing candy, and candy is sweet. But I think they're just a little bit overly sweet. Listen, anyone who doesn't think there's nuance in candy is stupid. Yeah, you don't know. Stand by that. They're fine. I'm much more impressed with the Starburst, what were they, Airs? Yeah, Starburst Airs. Which maybe we'll review those another time, but I think that the texture is awesome on those and that they taste more like Starbursts. So it's hard when you already have something to compare it to, but I don't know. They're fine. I probably won't buy them again. I will say this is a good opportunity just to shout out Skittles gummies. Yeah. Those are the shit, and they actually taste like the Skittles from the red package and the purple package, respectively. Totally. See, that is a successful candy gummy interpretation because you still get the essence of the Skittle in its gummy form. Yes. Like, I could eat any gummies to taste like a gummy. Yeah, don't say Starburst if it's not going to taste like a Starburst. Yeah, that, that was my biggest complaint. I feel you. I think those are totally respectable opinions, and mine is not very useful today. <laughs> but I'm glad you liked them. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Very much in a candy mood. Uh, let's get to those limo entrances. Oh, I'm actually kind of happy that they spent less time on the limo entrances this episode. I timed it. How I was long? like, how long is this actually going to be? And then was so surprised. They went 20 minutes, 45 seconds. And that was before Nehemiah got out of the limo. But that was all 25 men. Okay. I think because of the Nehemiah thing, they spent less time on the limos to make space for like him talking to the men at the bar and stuff. Which was way way more fun. Do not ever, ever bring back long limo entrances. Yeah. I mean, I don't, hot take, I didn't love the Nehemiah stuff. I do like Nehemiah as a person, but I didn't love having him a part of this first episode. 
But I love the fact that they kind of rushed through the limo entrances and made more space for us to get to know the men better. Yeah. Um, I really, really appreciated that there were no really overly gimmicky. Yeah. That's like a good nobody point. rolling up in a monster truck, nobody rolling up in a kid's toy, no one riding a sheep. Yeah. Or bringing <laughs> an ice cream truck. I don't know. It was just really cool to yeah. like also not have our time wasted. And I feel like all the guys. It also gives charity like a chance to meet the guys a little more sincerely than I think happens sometimes because it can with I want to say the exception of fucking Spencer. What is up with that guy? I'm not sure. I was just going to ask real quick. Do you think there was no gimmicky entrances because it was raining? <sighs> They're just like, this is a fire hazard. No, I don't know. Maybe for sure. I that would be awesome. Um, but I don't know. I'm a fan for whatever reason. Yeah, I was trying to remember if I've ever seen another season start in the rain. That was pretty cool, though. I love the rain. Yeah, and it's I like the setting. little like gazebo thing that she was standing under. Yeah, but man, yeah. she looked cold all night. I'm sure she was freezing. Dude, yeah, that's intense. Uh, I like that we started out with Aaron B. Upholding, I think, my belief that he has very good fashion. Yeah, he did have pretty good fashion khaki suit, pink tie, and he had his navy with gold embellishment, square pocket. Yeah. I will say I was overall underwhelmed with a lot of the fashion choices made by the men. There were a lot of season. loafers with no socks. <laughs> that and like, just like average suits that you would wear to church. Like, I don't know. I was like, come on, guys. Yeah, first night, spend some money on a tailored suit, especially if you get something black and simple that you're going to be able to recycle that and it's not going to be super obvious. You don't have to go yeah. hard. Or do something edgy that makes you stand out a little bit. I will say my guy Caleb brought it with that uh, I don't know what that was. Blue tie-dye. Oh yeah. I actually loved it. And then maybe I loved it because everyone else was so bland. For sure. But he, I was like, damn, okay. So rock and roll. Right? He, I will say, right out of the gate, super surprised me. He was not who I expected in the absolute best of ways. So yeah. that was really fun when they did a little intro on him. And he's like, oh, he's like sitting there, like doing his fake wrestling moves, beating the shit out of some other guy. But then he's like, but I'm a really good guy at heart. And, you know, I believe him at this moment. Well, you kind of guessed that. You said maybe he gets out all of his toxic masculinity during wrestling. And, he and totally, he's like a sweetheart in real life. Yeah. And he admitted that it's a character he plays and, you know, that that's not who he is. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Love that. Um, I found Josh's limo entrance really cringy. And he was the one that had Charity put his hand on his chest. Ugh. And he said like a bunch of like heartfelt things. Yeah. Oh, I got major ick watching that. Yeah. Not a fan of that. Um, Chris backflipped. No surprise there. Uh, we can get to it later too, but like the little macho man thing that oh happened God. was so annoying. <laughs> Chris can do one thing. Chris can jump and Chris is going to jump for everybody. Yeah. He's a one trick pony. I did think it was funny that Aaron S was like, these are men in heat. Like this. <laughs> I was like, that's so true. I know. Despite myself, he, I, he did make me laugh. Um, that is, yeah, those guys. I, yeah, I guess we don't even really have to spend a lot more time on limo entrances unless there's anybody that you wanted to. Well, I wrote some that stood out to me. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, I thought Brayden's tray of shots was kind of clever. Actually, yeah, that, that was a smooth move. I don't know why he suggested taking shots of tequila if he doesn't like taking shots of tequila. Does he know? I don't know. Did we learn that tequila is Charity's favorite? I didn't quite understand that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't quite get that either. Obviously, Spencer was the biggest ick. Yep. Uh, what that do you think is going on there? I am really conflicted. I don't know. I think it might, obviously, he's incredibly nervous. Yeah. And I think when you're nervous, you have tics that get exacerbated at times. And so I wonder if he already has something going on. I'm not I'm not a psychologist. I don't want to like diagnose anybody, but like there might be something more going on there and that's just a stress response and that under normal circumstances he can like get it together and speak a little more succinctly. Maybe. What do you <laughs> think is going on? I don't know. I'm not a therapist either and so I'm not going to diagnose, but 
It was hard to watch. Um, Charity did a really good job of making all of the men feel heard and safe and comfortable. For she sure. was so confident. She didn't really seem nervous at all. And I felt like her energy um, must have been palpable enough for the men because I felt a lot of the men handled the entrance in a more smooth way than we normally see. Yeah, there really wasn't a lot of awkwardness that makes you want to die. Yeah, I, aside from Spencer, I felt like everything went pretty well overall. I was really annoyed at Sean, who has my vote for probably biggest douche at this point, but I don't know. Uh, his pants were so short, and he was not wearing socks. And I was just like, this tracks. That's the guy with the cigars. Yeah. Also, he has good hair, but he doesn't wear his hair good. Good. Agreed. It's like too stylized. You know, when you have longer hair, it kind of needs to be a little bit of like the effortless run, mess. Yeah, you run your fingers through it. It's a little shaggy. It's a little, you know, windblown. Yeah. And he just looked too well done. Interesting take. Yeah. I don't know. Also, his commentary was already annoying. So annoying. Um, I thought um, John's fortune cookie moment was cute. Very cute. That was very funny. Charity also really, really ap- appreciated that. Um, I love that um, Doton made it so much about her and him being excited to meet her I know. That was honestly so, so sweet. I I really liked him. And my God, he is tall. I wrote that for so many men. Just they are tall, tall, tall. I know. So tall. How tall is Charity? I don't know. I don't know. Just watching her hug some of these men. I'm like, like, oh my God, you're you're coming up to his chest. Yeah. That was pretty wild. Um... I appreciated that John Henry brought his mask, his scuba mask that he works in as a welder. Yeah. That was kind of fun. He kind of disappeared this episode. He didn't get sent home. But I think uh, a lot of the internet was really into John Henry, and we are underwhelmed thus far. Oh, not surprised. Let's see. Um, I do owe Xavier an apology. I think it's really cool that he is a biochemist because he wants to help with autoimmune uh, diseases because his mom has an auto- autoimmune disease. <gasps> so, I mean, he is a mama's boy because he referenced his mom multiple times in his um, opening package. But now but, we know why. You know, that's pretty sweet. And seeing him knit in a beanie and play the ukulele was pretty cute. Redeemed. Yeah. That's the fun part about these, you know, when we do the hot takes, it's just whatever. But it's fun when they prove us wrong. Yeah. Did you have any more limo notes? Uh, Pilot Pete made a pilot joke. Wah, wah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I was really excited about the guys. I felt like overall it was a really good entrance for everybody. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and short. Ugh, not 45 minutes. So really. Take notes. We like this much better. So much better. For sure. Um, I guess that leads us to, if you don't have anybody else, Nehemiah, undercover brother. Okay, yeah, let's uh, talk about Nehemiah. Well, you've clearly got an opinion, so lay it on me. Well, okay. I like Nehemiah. I like their relationship as siblings. I think, I was thinking about this from a personal perspective. Like, it doesn't matter how good of a relationship I have with my brother. Like, this... This is Charity's first night being the Bachelorette. This is her moment. So one, I don't really know how much I would want to share that with one of my siblings. Two, I don't know how comfortable I would be knowing that my older brother, who maybe is protective, is like going at it from this angle. Like, well, yes, it is sweet and she can have this inside information. I feel like that would always kind of be in the back of my mind, like wondering what his experience is and what he's hearing and what he's doing and whatnot. And it also kind of bothers me from the perspective of like, would they ever have a sister on to do this for a bachelor? Like it kind of comes across as, you know, the whole brothers are protective of their sisters and men have to protect women and tra la la. And I do want to caveat that I know that they're really close and I love their relationships as siblings, but I just felt like, 
I don't know. If I was Charity, I don't think I would have been thrilled that my brother was there. <laughs> yeah, I actually really grappled with a lot of those things too, waffling between this is providing really good content. She didn't know he was there doing that. Oh, okay. So it wasn't something that bothered her. Just that note, she had no idea. He surprised her to say that he had sat out there the entire time. Okay, but when do, so he comes in at the end of the limos. And so then what are we left with? Like, why is he there? He just wanted to wish her luck. And they just wanted her to have somebody that, you know, a familiar face. Is how they played it. And then they showed him leaving. Okay. I've, I don't, I'm sorry. I think I missed that part. It's okay. I still think, though, your main points, like the bigger thing, definitely stands. Like it, I had those moments of like, okay, fine. But also, I definitely don't want my brother's opinion on things. And again, yeah, they're close, but it's sort of like playing with fire. Like, don't introduce family until you feel really comfortable and confident with a relationship. It also is a little duplicitous, like maybe that's not the right word, but like it feels like it's not fair to the guys <laughs> yeah, to sort of be caught unaware. And like, sure, it is good to vet out locker room talk and all of that stuff, like no yeah. doubt. I don't know. But then it was really funny. And to be honest, I did really love it. I did get good vibes from it. I, I, I'm kind of here for it, but I also like I 100% feel what you're feeling too. I don't know how I feel. I mean, feel. I was thrilled that Charity was just like, whatever, I'm going to do what I want. And I think that that was a moment that told me that Charity is here to be a little messy and make some good television. So I was kind of, I mean, we can talk about Brayden later, but I was a little thrilled that she was just like, whatever, I'm giving this guy my rose because I'm connecting with him the most. Like, thanks, bro. Everybody else's opinions be damned. Yeah, I, I don't know. In that moment, because... I don't know if we've seen that part of Charity. And so I just loved how like confident and I don't know. She was just like. She's so confident. She is going to do what she wants to do. Yeah, and she, I am here for it. She's not playing the game. She's going to decide what she wants to decide. Yeah. Um, I agree. I like I, I don't know. I, I really I feel like I should maybe have an opinion, but I really waffled between enjoying it and also feeling all the same things you were feeling of just like. Mm. I mean, I, I can do, do without the the overly protective kind of angle. I will say anytime The Bachelor does something new, it is refreshing. So from that angle, it was a fun new addition to a very predictable night. It did mix things up a little bit. Uh, I, I didn't think that the men really did anything that. To their bad. credit, no. And we, we can, I guess, it, do you want to just move on to kind of the the interaction of the night, like the interactions. Yeah. Let's like, start with Joey. <laughs> yeah. Joey is so cute. <laughs> I know. You're here for Joey. <laughs> like, what are we even talking about? Dude, Charity is really into him, too. Oh, yeah. The way she was, like, snuggled in. and She kept, like, leaning doing in. Doing the little finger thing. Oh, my gosh. Because I thought he was going to be the first kiss on our last podcast. And so she kept leaning in like she was wanted him to kiss her. I was like, come on, Joey. Come on. He was not even looking her in the eyes. He <laughs> just was like nervous, straightforward, nothing. Yeah. that He disappointed me in that moment, but he's pretty cute. Yeah. I, sh there was some chemistry there. They, they were very close. She said he gave her butterflies. Oh, so cute. Uh, James. Being embarrassed about the letter his mom wrote. Wow, what a letter. Like, written in beautiful handwriting. Also, I will say I thought it was sweet. Of course, we hope it's James, but either way. Um, I thought I got good vibes from him. No, I did too. I thought, and like, a mom that sends cider and donuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up to be a part of that family. Absolutely. <laughs> I got really good vibes from him too. I thought that was so fun. Just like, it was sweet. It was different. Yeah. I, I enjoyed their interaction a lot. Xavier, first kiss. Ow, ow. She and like, was like into that. And it wasn't just like one kiss. It was like a kiss. And, and then, then a another kiss. kiss. And then, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then again. Felt kind of dirty watching it. You're like, ooh. Again? <laughs> I love that for her. Um, yeah. And kind of throughout this, like, we're getting a lot of Nehemiah talking to the guys. And, like, back to your your point before we kind of steamrolled us into the 
conversation, nobody really did anything super egregious. Like, I mean, we had Michael say that he prefers curvy women to petite women. I mean, <laughs> which hell like, yeah. Like, that's fine. I don't know why if this now is the time and place to like vocalize it. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel like that's such a that's a that's a good take. I'll take that take. Yeah, but he if he's there to date charity, charity's obviously like really petite. And so I look like have your preference. You know, I think everyone has a type, but I just didn't think it was maybe the right moment to be talking about your type if charity doesn't physically align with your type. Personally, fair enough. I feel like he was. I mean, I I got the take that you know. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's totally fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah. The guy's just kind of moving through everybody. Um, I'm trying to see who stuck out to me. What did you think of Aaron's cringy piano moment? Oh, God. Enough of the music. What are we doing? Well, like, his piano playing was cute, but why was he doing, like, weird spoken word poetry things that, I don't know. <laughs> there is a time and place for a man to play the piano and have it be sexy. And I just felt like he didn't quite sell it. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't awesome. Um, who was that playing the piano? Aaron. Oh, yep, Aaron B. B. Yep, and then yep, they yep. also kissed. I have to say, after she got into the flow of things, Charity was like initiating kisses, like left and right. I love it. Get in there, girl. <laughs> Figure out who you've got that chemistry with. That's so important. Yeah, she was just like leaning in. I was like, damn, okay, go. <laughs> yeah. I no, I I love that. I it's so funny. My notes under all of that with Erin are yeah, Charity is so fun. And she seems to be doing all of this with so much ease and grace too. Like I just Yeah, she's ready. She is. I mean, She's got her master's degree. She knows what she deserves. This is this is going to be good for her. I'm really excited. Um, then we have Spencer telling her that he's a dad, which I wonder. Okay, I thought that was a a weird move because usually what happens when someone is a single mom or a single dad is that person gets a one on one date and then. They have this dinner and at the dinner they open up and tell them that they're a parent and then the lead has to decide like, oh, that is a big deal. And like if I if we ended up together, I would be, you know, the parent to your child. And then we get the ITMs about tra la la. There's a whole song and dance. But I think Spencer either knew that he might go home night one and he should tell a charity that he's a dad. So he Sympathy can stay card. On. <laughs> or a producer was like, my dude, you got to do this. Yeah, I feel like him also getting that rose and him staying was just produced. If I've ever. All production. It really did not feel like Charity's Choice like at all. Get out of here. You're telling me that girl sent home seven guys and Spencer stayed? Yeah, that didn't make sense. No. And like, we know that she has to pick more people than she's interested in. But like, why would you subject yourself to that? That's going to be so awkward. She did a really good job at staying calm and I guess welcoming his interactions. Like, I was so impressed with her ability to just be present and play the game. But wow. Yeah, I think he just viscerally makes everyone watching a little uncomfortable. Well, didn't. Oh, man, he's the guy who was encouraging Charity to kick him in the balls yeah. in the limo. Yeah. yeah. Dude. No. Yeah, it's a lot. That's so much. And he's got he's got a very strange affect. Like, I don't know exactly what's going on there, but it's, I don't know. Yeah. So it's a little awkward. It'll be interesting to see how long he stays. Yeah. Josh was on to Nehemiah. Which really made me laugh. Yeah, he recognized. Well, he he didn't recognize him, but he said he looked familiar. Yeah, made me laugh. Um. Okay. So then there was a lot of backflipping and jumping, and I will say, is it Caleb? Is that the wrestler? No. What's the wrestler? Yeah, Caleb. Name? Caleb. I mean, as annoying as Chris, the jumper guy, was at being like super obnoxious and alpha and doing all of his jump moves. I loved it that Caleb was like, dude, you're not the only guy that can flip and was like, hold my hat. <laughs> yeah, I took off his jacket. Dude, also, I, that's a large man. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, I might actually have a little crush on Caleb. <laughs> just like that 24-year-old WWE wrestler is like really doing it for me right now. What even is this? But I think he's cute. He was very charming. And he has a CrossFitter type body where it's not like super cut, but you can like, he's still very fit. Oh, yeah. But like, yeah. Also, he'd probably win if he was wrestling against a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's true. Um, this is what I've been really excited uh, to get to. I want to know your thoughts on Brayden. I have actually really mixed thoughts. Oh, my God. Same. He started talking and I was like, I don't like this guy. I was like, Charity likes this guy? And then I was like, no, this is a, mm, trying, trying, trying. And then he just went and ran his mouth. Wouldn't stop talking. I was like, nope, I don't like Brayden. But clearly our girl does. My first vibe was, ooh, I don't know. Like the way he kind of tried to immediately bond with her over the cheating thing. And yeah, it, it just felt kind of forced and not natural. I will say I did. I feel like she kind of put him on the spot when she asked him what it was about her on Zach's season that he was attracted <sighs> to. And I thought his answer for that question was really good. The empathy answer. Yeah. And I felt like he explained it really well. Like, I don't know. I felt like there was nuggets of what he was saying where I was like, that was a good answer. Like, I don't know. And I, I've heard some shit talk on the internet about his earrings. I just want to say, like, if you have issues with Brayden's earrings, like, fuck off. People can, like, men especially can be adventurous with their fashion. Like, what if he wears a dangly earring in this very conservative reality show? Like, hell yeah, I'm so here for that. But I do think that Brayden is young. I think he's immature. I think he's um, kind of an attention whore. I think he lacks self-awareness. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, I, I think that he's probably trouble, ultimately. And I think that he might be there for, ooh, the wrong reasons you know, to get some sort of following or whatnot. I could totally get that vibe from him. But I didn't, when he was talking about the kiss afterwards, I didn't really think that that was that terrible in all of the things that could be terrible. He was excited. He was being loud. It's also like he was being overly confident to kind of like, in a way that men do, which I'm not saying this is okay, but like kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, being territorial. Mm. Like, oh, I kissed her. It was great. Like, he was being overly confident about that interaction almost to, like, intimidate other guys, maybe even subconsciously. Mm. And I think with men, that works in a way that it doesn't with women. So, I don't know. I think he's kind of a mixed bag. I think he's alternative. I think he has weird fashion. I think, you know, there's a lot of, ooh, I don't knows. But I'm also not here to, like, write him off yet. Oh, I am. I see a problem. Which is what? Ugh, I don't know. The talking about the kiss thing just really rubbed me the wrong way because there's a level of immaturity and a lack of consideration for charity and all of those things that really just grates me. Like but that is what if people were asking him and they edited out that he was being prompted? Because they they made out in a very public space. So it could have been that like everyone saw him doing it. And then maybe multiple people came up and was like, ooh, I saw you kissing Charity. For sure. I, going off of the edit, not a fan. Yeah, we don't know. But I'm he just sat saying down things and can I, be edited in a way. He sat down and I was not a fan of him. He kind of gave me some hairs on the back of my neck. Not a fan. Like, I don't know. Well, guess we'll see what happens. I wish cooler people would wear cooler earrings, you know, like we'll see. Hopefully he wears them well and he. Well, I'm just saying there's been like uh, I've listened to a couple podcasts where people have been trash talking the earrings and I think that's kind of shitty. Oh, yeah. Nothing like clothing, jewelry should not be gendered and anybody should get to enjoy the artistic endeavors of somebody else. And if wearing earrings makes somebody happy. Yeah, for sure. No reason for men not to be able to enjoy earrings. Yeah, so that was more so I was just like, I think he's a little, I definitely think he's a different flavor <laughs> for Bachelor Nation. But even if he ends up being an asshole, I want more different flavors. Sure. I want more people who are 
changing up the game of who we're seeing on the show. Oh, yeah. I think that they make for far more compelling TV than the the kind of whitewashed normal yeah. guys we get. This is, this is the one thing about this season, though, is I do feel like it's been a very interesting group of guys for very different reasons. It's not like they just packed a room full of black men and are like, ta-da. Like, we've got black men. We've got Middle Eastern men. We've got alternative guys. We've got, like, a much broader spectrum. Everybody doesn't fit, like, yeah, I this think so kin too. vibe quite the same way that I think we have in past seasons. And I think that that's really good for Charity because she's, she's showing to be adventurous and somebody who is, like, willing to think outside the box on a lot of things. So let her have a good selection of, like, and so many of people them people to choose from. So many of them have actual careers. Yeah, no fucking fake jobs. I love that. You know, she get with those doctors, get with those scientists. Like pro tennis people, pro wrestlers. I don't know. That's awesome. Yeah, and so- I do think that there seems to be a little bit more maturity in this group and it's not even because of age like i think this i think the youngest man is 24 and the oldest is 33 so they're not even necessarily that old but i i just feel like in comparison to what was the last bachelorette season was it gabby and rachel ugh yes i don't know just in comparison to gabby and rachel's men th- these men seem like they're in a different life phase Yes, the group collectively really does feel a lot more mature. Uh, everybody does seem to have a good job. Like, yeah, I don't know. I agree with you. I think that it's, I do think 24 is still on the younger side of things, personally. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't know what 24-year-old guys are doing there, but, you know, good for them, I guess. Uh, is what it is. But no, Braden. Well, not- apparently Charity's in a 24-year-old's because. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, though, all things like the way that that played out at the end did sort of um, ease some of my fears on Charity's part of like her brother coming in and doing this and that kind of paternal vibe that that was giving off when she was just like, "Uh, is that a red flag? No, no. In fact, I love this. (laughs) This is my favorite. And like in that sense, good for Charity. And I absolutely love that who doesn't love a mess, who hasn't been really attracted to a guy who is maybe not the best for you, but is absolutely the best feeling. Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) And like she deserves to ride that out. And if she can find her husband along the way. Yeah. Even better. I'm sure their chemistry was electric. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. (laughs) So I don't know. If nothing else, Brayden will make good television. And... uh, I'm here for good television. I also like you going hard for the alternative guys. Way to go. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if his glasses are real. Oh, my God. They could be fashion frames. I actually, which I, that is kind of problematic. Yeah, I hate that. I shouldn't, but like, it's no reason. It's like my version of bitch eating crackers and people wearing fake glasses. I don't know why. So, yeah. I mean, hopefully they're real, but I'm just saying with his... <laughs> aesthetic it's hard to tell it is I mean yeah well, not gonna get it all right <laughs> um I do appreciate that uh Charity told me Amaya that she could carry out the luggage yeah so that's pretty cool she really does have a good sense of that and so to be fair when she did give Braden that rose I was just like okay I will say I was I mean I did like Charity on Zach season but I didn't think we get got to see much of her personality and the way that it was edited, Charity was never really involved in the drama, even though some of the drama did have to do with Charity, like with the Greer London date. Wait, was that Greer? No, that was that was Greer and uh, Anastasia. No, not Anastasia. No, I'm thinking of Anastasia. Gabby went on the London date. I know, but who was the girl that pulled Zach oh, right. right before Charity's date? Oh, that was Katie. No, it wasn't Katie. No, not Katie. Cat. Cat. Okay. I'm just saying, there were some things in Zach's season that involved Charity, but Charity was never shown to be a part of the drama. And so, 
I liked Charity, but I was like, what are we going to see from Charity? You know, I know that she's grounded. I know she's mature. I know she's professional. I know she's sweet and kind and thoughtful and like all these great things. But I had a little concern of like, is Charity going to give us good television? Like, are we going to see some like messiness and some realness and some, you know, because as much as I liked what I saw from Zach's season, I do feel like what, like we were talking about, we tend to remember and appreciate the leads that kind of just put it all out there. And so I felt like there was signs from this first episode where Charity just really leaned into it and she's like willing to put it all out there. So it makes me more excited to watch her season and just how she handled some of the interactions tonight. For sure. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Kind of the rumor mill is that they had already decided as they were filming that Charity was going to be the Bachelorette. And so she also really got that edit. So that could be why, too, we didn't see a lot is because anything that could have been good, quote unquote, good. They didn't want us to like that her her image, not that she did anything wrong, just to be clear. There's nothing saying that just right. You know, you maybe maybe get edited out of made her more controversial. Or even just show more of her personality. I, who knows why the powers that be do what they do. It's, it never makes a lot of sense. Hmm. So I think they really did us a disservice because Charity could have yeah. I, really added to last season and we desperately needed something more than what we got. So <laughs> I'm really glad we get her for a bachelorette. Like this is, this is going to be good. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good season. Yeah, and she... She sent seven guys home. Also, she had less men than most people. I know. She only had 25, and usually they have 30. Yeah. Which I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, same. To be fair, like, let's just get down to it sooner so that she gets more time with guys that she probably actually genuinely has a connection with. And as a viewer, I felt like we got to get to know the men a little bit more because there were fewer of them. I would agree with that. Although, I still cannot count for the life of me who went home. Yeah, me neither. I wrote it out, and I've got Chris, Khalid, Nick, Taylor, Peter, Joe, but that is only six, and I keep trying to reference my list. Who is the seventh man that left? Oh, I don't know. I feel so dumb. Like, it's not that hard. Mysterious number seven. Ugh, yeah, so annoying. Anyway, if anybody knows, I want to know. I <laughs> don't know. Um, but on that note, we've got our top four. That we have chosen, but man's <laughs> loves to gamify things. So we are going to flip our lucky coin. Okay. Well, last time um, we just picked our top four and we had some overlap. I think we had two of the same women on both of our top four. Uh huh. And it was fun, but it was also like we were so close to being right. I felt like it made it a little bit like less fun in the end. So I'm just saying. If we treat it more like a a bracket. <laughs> well, but yeah. No, it's totally fair. I know. It just spices things up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Feet to the fire. Uh, so if you would like to flip it. Heads. I'm really bad at flipping coins. That's okay. Okay. Do you want to be heads or tails? I'll be heads. Okay. It landed heads. Okay. Plus two out of three. Just for you. You can you can just go first. Okay. Well, I drew a head on the other side too, so that it was going to be heads no matter what. <laughs> I was wondering what was on the other side. Um, Jess foolproofed it. She won a lucky coin. Well, I just want to say I'm pretty sure Aaron B's coin was like a double headed coin. Yeah, he kept I that and get- that. I also didn't love the whole like flip it for a kiss move. No, I that's that's gross to me. Aaron B is not winning it for me. Ooh, okay. I am doing something that I feel is very sneaky. And I don't know if this is going to pay off for me. Okay, but you don't have any spoilers, right? No, no because spoilers. Just sometimes a spoiler guy. We can talk about the fact that I have some spoilers for Bachelor in Paradise in terms of who's going. But okay. that so far is all I've got. That's fine. Okay. My first guy is a wild card. Because I'm starting with a wild card. I'm hedging my bets. Okay, okay. I'm choosing Doughton. Doughton. Wow, that is a wild card. Dude, hear me out. I saw a very tall man walking with Charity on a beach. 
in the pro in like the the end scene. And I gambled. I rolled the dice, and I was like, "He is the tallest one I'm seeing." Maybe you the beach scene was like the final scene. Well, it was like part of the promo. Oh, okay. So I'm just basing it off of they had good chemistry when he got out of the limo. They did. I was kind of bummed was, we didn't see more of him. For sure. So like, I don't know. Maybe this is a bad idea. And like, no, who I'm knows? But it. I think maybe I saw him later on in the season. So we're going for okay, it. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, My number one pick then is going to be Xavier. Mm. <laughs> Mostly because... I just get really good energy from him. I feel like him and Charity could really compliment each other I in a lot really of ways. I was hoping you were not going to pick him, but yeah, <laughs> I that was my guy too. So Xavier's my number one. Okay. <laughs> I feel less confident in this choice, but Joey. God damn it. Yeah. yeah. See, they just had, re- but I don't know. Cause like you really, cause who was it? Who was the bachelor? Literally on that episode was like if you have a guy that you really like push him to the side yeah did you see in the this season on the bachelorette there's a (laughs) kiss with joey where he's like literally just licking up her face (gasps) no oh you didn't see that it was i saw joey a lot though which is either it was just like it was like one tiny scene of just like (laughs) no i missed go back and watch it okay yeah i was yeah. Okay. So there we go. My two. Okay. Um. Wow. After those three, I'm kind of shooting in the dark a little bit. All right. My number two is going to be James. Apple cider, French speaking, mama's letter, James. Okay. That was going to be my guy. <laughs> So, so far. <laughs> well, you took Joey. I was definitely going to say Joey. Uh, okay. Um, um, you know what? I'm going to go John with the fortune cookie. Oh, he was on my list. That's a good pick. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, are you sorry? <laughs> no. No, you're not sorry. Uh, okay. I feel like now is where we're really getting hairy. <laughs> um, I don't think Brayden makes it to the top four. I think Brayden's going to be problematic, but... Based on the previews. But wouldn't that be cool? I mean, not really for her because, I mean, if a dude's a problem, a dude's a problem. But, like, for her to just, like, block out the noise and maybe the house not win on, like, house villain. Well, that's kind of what happened on Hannah B's season for a while. But in the end, obviously, he went home. And that's what I'm wondering if it might be kind of similar to that. Like, I think that she might... I'm wondering if she maintains a really good romantic connection with Brayden, even though everyone doesn't like him. And then she finally sees through the bullshit before the top four. I don't know. That's tricky. I also am not sure what to do on that one. I know because most bachelorettes, the first impression rose is is like the the one. Yeah. All right. I am going to say. (sighs) Fuck it. I'm just going to put Brayden in there. I think I was going to do that too. (laughs) I was like, perfect. Man's not going to choose Brayden. I'll just go for it. <laughs> I don't feel good about it. I just want to say that. I don't know if it's a safe bet. Dude, I was going to do it. So I think that's probably really good. Okay, I'm going to pick somebody now. <laughs> this is fun. Damn. I don't know. Okay. Ah, no, don't stress me. Caleb B. Okay. Is that my wrestler? That's who I want. Caleb, my wrestler guy. Yeah. The Caleb that is the wrestler. Okay. Wow. I don't know. We're we're manifesting. <laughs> he is too young, though. No, he can't do it, but he top four. Come oh, on. I like his energy though. Me too. I'd rather he be in the top four than Brayden, probably. Word. Um, okay. My last pick is going to be Warwick. I was really conflicted between he says it Warwick. Oh, is it Warwick? Warwick. I don't know. Warwick slash Warwick. Yeah. He is still. He's really cute. I don't know. I. He also hilariously handed Charity the one way ticket to Ohio. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, who wants a one-way ticket to Ohio? I think that's where he lives. Oof. But also a bold assumption that she's just going to move to Ohio, buddy. Come on. It's Ohio. Well, she was on a podcast with Juliet, and she told Juliet that she'll pretty much move anywhere. That's not a deal breaker for her. Uh, so maybe she could be in Ohio. You know what? When you're a really highly educated woman the way that she is, I'm sure she has no trouble getting work. Yeah, she could probably kind work of like, anywhere. Right, unlike the rest, like I'm middle management, you know, but like she's got actual qualified skills to do things. So that probably does like really benefit her in these situations. That's pretty cool. Good for her. Good okay. for her. Let's recap our lists really quickly. So okay. I'll do mine first. I have number one, Xavier. Number two, James. Number three, Brayden. Number four, Warwick. Okay. And I've got Doton, Joey, John, and Kayla B. I think you have a really good list. I, I it'll be I think this is fun. We'll just see what happens. I'm not feeling super hot about it because <laughs> Doton, like, I don't know. I feel like I could have just like I don't know. I saw what I saw and it's stuck in my brain and I can't shake it. Okay. If we could pick our own top four, not knowing who she has chemistry with, just based on getting to know the guys, who would we put in her top four that we think would be just like good men that'd be good matches for her? I would put Doton in that list for sure. So I hope that you're right with that one. I hope so too. And actually, you know, John with the fortune cookie, there's two Johns. John Henry is the... The, the diver. The diver. That's so, only watched 20 movies. Yeah, so he will forever be known as John Henry, and then John is just John. Why does he get to have his last name? Because, you know, last season, on Zach's season, they had Christina. That we don't even remember her last name. Um, I don't know. She had her last name because she comes from, like, a famous family of singers. Yeah. And, no, and nobody else has their last name on the bios unless you're, if there's two Caleb's, you get, like, a last initial. Well, yeah, there's literally but Caleb A and Caleb But how come he gets to Caleb be John B. Henry? Maybe that's his middle name. Oh, maybe. Like he goes by both John names? John Henry, yeah. Okay. I don't know. I really like John. I like John too. He seems really, really fun. I got really good vibes off of him. Doton, yeah. Xavier. Xavier, yes. Xavier especially just, he seems so smart. And man, they had chemistry too, like big time. And I'm going to add James. I agree. that Between that letter, they ate the donut really cute. Yeah. There was, I would agree with that. James is a, James is a really good pick. I kind of feel like. See, that, I think that would be an awesome top four. Yeah, that would be. But I guess we'll see. <laughs> what happens. Let's just pray Brayden doesn't make it, but maybe he will also surprise us all. Um, drama rating. <laughs> I was thinking about this. I think I'm going to give it a three. Um, mostly because, I mean, there is drama in the fact that we're just kind of getting to know these guys and get to know Charity as the Bachelorette and there was the Nehemiah curveball but ultimately nothing really happened yeah I agree with your three I did love how pissed all the guys were when Brayden walked in with that rose oh my gosh I loved watching that oh me too (laughs) I died their faces Sean was pissed oh whatever I know. Your hair pisses me off. Yeah, same. Your whole face. Your aesthetic. Stop smoking those cigars. They're terrible for you. Um, You didn't watch Becca Kufrin's season, did you? No. But there was a guy in her season that Sean kind of reminds me of that also went to paradise. His name was Jordan. But I Jordan had some great one-liners and was good television, even though he was an asshole. Let's see if Sean can fill those shoes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, drama rating, threes all around. Uh, should we move to the real drama? Yes. We're bringing Vanderpump back. Bonus. <laughs> I did not watch every reunion or the Secrets Revealed episode on uh, every season, but my God, the second that I saw that I got a Secrets Revealed, for this season. You bet your ass I watched. It was so juicy. It was the gift that kept on giving. I was like, there has to be more, right? They can't have this good of content and not have more of it. Yeah. It was so surprising to me. Uh, I think most shocking that like Sandoval claims 
or some Ariana, not Ariana. Um, oh, Raquel and Sandoval seem like maybe they were going to be together. Yeah. And he still sold that apartment or like got rid of his rent controlled apartment. Like, does that seem like a guy who's planning on leaving his life partner? No. So weird. So I guess we don't know when they cleaned out the apartment. I mean, uh, it's so hard because I think it's hard for me to believe that the affair actually started when they are saying it started. You know, Jess and I have been like, yeah, there's all these signs that it probably started well before that. So that's a really good point. But on the other hand, it's like, I guess we don't really know when they cleaned out the apartment. Yeah, it it is a little hard to tell, but also just ugh, suspect. I will say it was kind of fun to watch them clean out the apartment and kind of like reminisce and show some of those scenes that happened there. Yeah, you're right. They You had told me when you started watching season one that they all looked like babies. And then when they flashed back, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that scene where um he's telling Stassi that he made out with someone at the Golden Nugget or something. That he made out with Ariana at the pool oh, and the yeah, Golden and Nugget. like, the Golden Nugget? And he's like, yeah, I know. No, he's like, I love the Golden Nugget. Oh. <laughs> Unironically. <laughs> Shut up, Tom. Um, so, yeah, it was fun kind of reminiscing through some of those older scenes and, like, Schwartz finding the beer bong. The beer bong. And yeah, it was cute. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It's Took it back to some old school VPR moments. Yeah. Uh, I don't exactly remember the sequential order of everything in that episode, but it was also really shocking to me that the night supposedly after Tom and Raquel slept together that Raquel showed up first thing that morning. Yep. With flowers for Ariana because her dog died. Which is rich. So, yeah, Ariana left the girls trip to, to put her dog down and Raquel and Charlie left the girls trip early because they weren't getting along with the other women. And so Raquel shows up the day after the boys' night at the Mondrian, which we know is the night that supposedly Tom and Raquel fucked for the first time outside of Tom's house. And then Tom had to be let in. Yeah. Ew. And so, like, the next morning she shows up while they're having coffee with flowers. And And supposedly we know exactly what happened the night before. And proceeds to then shit on Lala. Yeah. For saying, I wouldn't trust you with my man. You know what's funny is... (laughs) So when that happened, and I don't really blame her in this moment because I do think that the girls in Vegas were being mean girls, but first of all, she shouldn't have said what she said. That was a, like, she wasn't drunk enough not to remember what she said, even though she. Yeah, bullshit. She was not that drunk. Yeah, she wasn't that drunk. She knows what she said. She tried to play it off because she knew it was a shitty thing to say. And then the way that she was recounting the story to Ariana and Tom, and she was like so just like unapologetic and like this is what I said and (laughs) and then she's like and I made out with Oliver on the floor and Tom's smiling at her yeah Tom was giving her like fuck eyes the entire time Tom's a cuck oh the the liking your partner with somebody else like guaranteed he's a fan of that well and her flaunting that story about saying well like you're lucky you don't have a man in front of Ariana when she literally did that with Ariana's man the night before like, what the fuck? Yeah, there was layers of fucked up uh, around that. That was wild. No shame. That was that was really, really shocking. It was so bizarre to watch. Like, yeah. what are we even talking about? The other thing that I forgot that we got some of on that, too, was a little bit more of Tom and Katie's divorce. Yeah. That was sad. I wish that, that we had gotten more of Tom and Katie's story because I think I mean don't get me wrong I understand why the season was the way it was I honestly wish we just had more episodes um but Tom and Katie breaking up is I mean sorry getting a divorce is a really big deal that is a big deal especially because they've been together for so long like it was also (sighs) it's hard right because I understand not wanting to put your entire life out there but they have already it would have been really good to like good television to watch them arrive at that decision yeah and we only got that one scene of them still living together and I think you know watching them go from being 
you know, going through divorce, still living together, trying to navigate this together in a friendly way where you can tell that they still both really care about each other. Absolutely. To where we find them at the end of the season. Like that's a really dramatic shift in a long-term relationship. It is. And it shows, I think, how shitty Tom is being by really trying to weaponize the situation with Raquel to hurt Katie. He was obviously really upset by her sleeping with people, even yeah. though they were not together. And I think it really highlights why he did what he did and why he went along with it, because it was an angle for him to hurt Katie where he felt like he didn't really have a leg to stand on. Yeah, he was definitely like he said that she could date people and acted like, oh, yeah, like you can do that. But I think he was really hurt by it, even though, you know, like he said, like, yeah, you can do that. Um I think he was hurt by it, and I think he totally handled his pain in a really immature, uh, um, selfish way. Yeah. Which also speaks to, I think, and this is conjecture, of course, our opinions, but like, I do think it shows why he sort of wound up in a situation being a beard for Tom and Raquel because he was getting something out of it that yeah. he otherwise wouldn't have. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point because I don't think he would have just done that to do it, but I, I think he benefited from it in that very like pointed way. Even if he doesn't recognize that he was doing yeah, that and I, that, I, that was working, I don't want to say that he's a, a manipulative master. I don't think mastermind. Tom is that calculated or capable of being that calculated. But I think it was working for him. Yeah. I think it felt like it was a position of power for him that felt good. Yeah, of course. And so that makes that that kind of brought that full circle for me and that made a little bit more sense watching that anyway. Then we see Tom and Ariana go on a skating date. She looked so good. I know. God, she's cute. I think that that date made me sad for multiple reasons. Because I think even though we find Tom, especially, sorry, Tom Sandoval, especially this season, obnoxious and hard to watch. Like on that skating day when he was like doing all those stupid tricks and wearing his stupid flared pants and like doing all the things. Like, Ariana genuinely just loves that he does it. And she just laughs and she lets him be whatever he's going to be. And she just, I don't know, I think you can kind of see the dynamic of their relationship really clearly in that small moment. Yeah, that was a really sad thing to witness because she does love him so much. Because that guy is so cringe. Like, ew, knock it off. But, like, she's into it. She thinks yeah. it's funny. She thinks he's charming. And that's exactly what you should really think of your partner if you're together that long, like, is it kind of annoying? Yes. But also it's probably the reason why you fell in love with him in the first place. And I feel like she, she leans into that. She's, she's there. For yeah. It. She helps him pick out the green sparkly pants. Yeah. Yeah. She was not criticizing him at all about that. And it was sad to listen to their conversation and just like how much Raquel meant to them. Yeah. I think she said, um, I don't remember who she was referencing. Was it Lala or Katie? Like, you would have to work really hard for me not to like Raquel. Yeah. And, you know, that she was talking about that balancing of the fact that Lala and Katie don't like her, but she does. And how integrated Raquel is into their friend group. Yeah, I think that was kind of important. Um, so it's interesting that they pulled that scene out. I think, right, because if there were people who hadn't listened to podcasts or really understood, like, how... Ariana wasn't choosing to turn a blind eye to that. She really just had that much trust there. Like that's yeah. the level at which Raquel was integrated into things. Yeah. And then I think we also got to see a scene with Allie and James where we, I mean, obviously, you know, James is a very flawed human, but I think that James was hurt from both sides of this affair where it is his ex fiance. And then it is one of his best guy friends who's been very invested in his relationship with Raquel when they were engaged. And also someone that's just kind of been, I guess, like an older brother figure slash supportive friend. And um, I think, I don't know, I've said this before, like I think James has a hard time obviously controlling his emotions and reactions to things. But I also think that James is probably one of the more sensitive men on the show and I don't know I think that there was a reason why 
we got full blown James in the reunion. I think James is pissed. I think he's hurt. I think he feels betrayed. And I also know that James is obviously good friends with Ariana. So there's that side of it too. But I think that was an interesting conversation between him and Allie kind of talking about that betrayal. Yeah. Yeah. They're really fleshing that out. Didn't we see Sheena talking with Raquel too, making bracelets or making yes. jewelry? And like Sheena being fucking weird about all of that. Yeah, I think uh, what happened was Raquel was telling Sheena about the Vegas trip. Right. And then they were talking about what they were going to do for Raquel's birthday where they went glamping together. And she was asking Raquel, so who's going to go on the trip? And Raquel said, oh, you and wait, what's she? Brock. Brock. So she, you and Brock, uh, Ariana and Tom, and then Tom Sandoval. I mean, damn it. Schwartz and me. And Sheena starts laughing and she's like, it sounds like a couple's trip. And God, Sheena, Sheena. you're so annoying sometimes. Like, <laughs> don't you see why Katie would be? I know. Sheena, <laughs> Sheena, Sheena. It really, really kills me. Girl tries, but she just does not connect the dots. She just. <sighs> I will say it was hilarious when Katie showed up to the girls night. I think it was at Sir um, while Charlie was working. And oh, Katie yeah. showed up wearing the dress that Sheena is photographed in in the front of her podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's either a ballsy movie from Katie being like, fuck you. Or, you know, it also gave Sheena the opportunity to be super catty about it. <laughs> yeah. I. To be fair, I'm definitely a lot more team Katie than I think I am a lot of these other people. But like. Sometimes there are just moves where you're like, okay, yeah, like you can absolutely wear that dress, but like people going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Which is stupid. Definitely. To be talk. fair, like I hate well, when I, I see something on somebody and I'm like, damn, that looks really good and I want to wear that. And I'm like, oh, you literally cannot do that. You cannot go buy that and wear it too. So like part of me understands it, but then part of me also recognizes you have to play ball with the politics of being in friend groups and that means not wearing the same dress your friend wore on the cover of their podcast photo. Yeah, unless Katie was doing it in a super calculated way and did it to piss Sheena off. I think she did. Yeah. There's no way that you accidentally, like, I don't know. Yeah, she did. There's just no way. <laughs> to be fair, they both look really good in it. No, they did. You guys, this, women are so calculated and capable of stirring shit. And like, I would like to say that I would not be mad about that, but I would. Oh, I would be for sure. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing? But then also, I get it. Like, ugh, not in a calculated way, but in a, well, like, I appreciate people's listen, fashion way. It's only calculated because Sheena and Katie were fighting. Right. If, if they, they were fine, it would have been an inter entirely different interpretation. Right. Like, you look so good in this. I yeah, can't like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my gosh. I have that dress, too. <laughs> Yeah, something, but that's not how that played out. <laughs> Wait, but weren't they then also in that moment talking about the man that's going down on Raquel that's really good? I don't remember. Yes. She was telling Ariana about that, and the only logical person it could be would be Tom. <gasps> well, now I have to rewatch that scene. It's probably not. I may be over-exaggerating that, guys but you guys, that's me, but how- I'm covering my eyes because that's crazy. <laughs> You need to go rewatch that scene. Tell me what you think. Tell me if that's your interpretation. That's mine. Okay. I will go watch it. I forgot about that. All coming back to me. Well, I really enjoyed those last little delicious moments of what an incredible season. Was there anything else that you wanted to no. comment on? That's all that sticks out to me. If yeah. you could keep going, maybe I could riff, but I'll be honest. My brain is pretty cleared out yeah. at this point. I tried rewatching it today, but I ran out of time, so I only made it halfway through. I opted for another nap that I did not have time for. <laughs> See? Yeah. Uh, I think we did pretty good considering we haven't watched it for two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's, there's, there's some things there. If there's anything that stuck out to you, we want to hear it. Yeah. And let us know what you thought of the first episode. Yeah. We, we had a lot of fun. Hopefully you had a lot of Who's fun. Who's your top four? Yeah. Tell us, tell us, tell us. All right. We love you guys. Thanks for everything. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. 
Drama Bonded is produced and hosted by Mandy Booth and Jessica Brumbaugh. Our production manager and editor is Solomon Brumbaugh. Our theme music is by Joe Waters. You can find more of his music streaming on the EP Jupiter Daywatch. Music vocals by Mandy Booth. Graphic designer is Pigeon House. Thank you.